Welcome to Divorce at Altitude, a podcast on Colorado family law. I'm Ryan Calamea. Each week, along with my business partner and co-host, Amy Gosha, or an expert, we discuss a particular topic related to divorce or co-parenting in Colorado. In addition, we have created a short series of lessons that will take you through the legal process of divorce and answer your questions from simple to complex. Divorce isn't easy. The end of a marriage, especially when children are involved, brings a great deal of loss and change. We hope these practical tips and insights will help you on your journey to a new and better life. So we've covered how to file for divorce and the automatic injunction. What else do you need to know at this phase in uh, the divorce process here in Colorado? Well, there's going to be an initial status conference scheduled with the court. Generally, that takes between six and eight weeks after you file uh, for divorce. During that time, initial disclosures are uh, being worked on. Uh, and under Rule 16.2, those initial disclosures are going to entail the sworn financial statement, which is uh, essentially a summary of your income, expenses, assets, and debts. That needs to be filed with uh, the court. It's a judicial form. A lot of divorce lawyers such as us will use a software program to um, you know, go through this sworn financial statement um, and, and produce it. Uh, then the second thing uh, that you should understand on the initial disclosures is that uh, there are there's a form 35.1 that lays out at a minimum what disclosures need to be made. That's going to be the last three years uh, tax returns, financial reports, profit and loss statements, balance sheets from a, a business if a business is involved, uh, credit card statements, bank statements, the most recent of those, uh, any sort of um, employment benefits. Uh, those all need to be disclosed to the other party. And there's what's called a certificate of uh, compliance. And so you, that is filed with the court and it checks off uh, that you've disclosed these particular documents. You don't actually file with the court your credit card statements and your tax returns, but you need to provide that to the other party. And it's important that you have a record of what is uh, issued or disclosed. For divorce lawyers, we oftentimes will, will do what's called Bates labeling, um, and that will be a label uh, and a number on the bottom of the page. That ensures that if we're talking about uh, a particular document, the August 2019 bank statement uh, that has you know a particular transaction, uh, that we can be assured that we're talking about the right uh, statement by referencing the number uh, that is uh, the page number that is involved. The other thing that is important to understand is that Rule 16.2 lays out the minimum that one needs to be providing to the other party. Generally speaking, uh, anything that is material uh, to the resolution of the uh, disputes involved needs to be disclosed to the other party without them even asking uh, for that. And that can entail uh, text messages, pictures, voicemails, uh, recordings, and it depends on the court and the circumstance and whether or not you actually have to disclose that ahead of time. The general rule of thumb within our law firm is that disclosure of more is better because discovery fights can oftentimes increase fees dramatically. And the overarching rule or the theory behind Rule 16.2 is that both parties owe a duty of a fiduciary duty to one another to be fully transparent uh, and to disclose without asking. Thanks for listening or watching this short lesson on the Divorce at Altitude podcast. If you found this helpful, please leave a review or share with a friend. It does help for others that are going through or thinking about a divorce in Colorado. If you want to find out more information, please visit kalamea.law or divorcealtitude.com. And that's K-A-L-A-M-A-Y-A.law. Remember, this is educational uh, information. It's not intended to be legal advice. Please consult with an attorney. 
uh, about the particulars of your case, we're happy to answer questions. Feel free to give us a call at 970-315-2365.